day the tear of a child is the judge. The grief of a mother is the prosecutor. Oh, what a long and painful road judges and prosecutors had to plod to reach this courtroom. Before fascism could be tried, it had to be vanquished. Hitler's countless hordes swept on, seemingly irresistible, until the Red Army struck and struck again and emerged victorious. To horror and death came the victors, judges, and prosecutors. The wounded, leaning on their comrades, pressed onward. The dead, before they dropped, bequeathed the call for retribution to the living and marched on, invisible in the ranks of the living. In the forests of Belarusia, the guerrillas joined the soldiers. Across Yugoslavia's mountain summits came Tito's dauntless warriors. Living and dead have come here to judge. They sit invisible in the courtroom, but the criminals see and hear them and tremble. The hour of reckoning has come. And the International Military Tribunal, in the name of the freedom-loving nations, is sitting in judgment of the Nazi criminals. Chief Judge for the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, Major General Nikitschenko. His Deputy, Lieutenant Colonel Volchkov. Chief Judge for the United Kingdom, Lord Justice Lawrence. His Deputy, Sir Norman Burkett. Chief Judge for the United States of America, Francis Biddle. His Deputy, Parker. Chief Judge for the Republic of France, de Fabre. His deputy, Falco. The court is presided over by Lord Justice Lawrence. Among the distinguished visitors, Vyshinsky, Deputy Foreign Minister of the USSR, and Goshenin, Soviet Prosecutor General. The criminals are accused of general conspiracy, of crimes against peace, of crimes of war, of crimes against humanity. The prisoner's dock. Hermann Goering, Hitler's close friend, formerly known as the second man in the Reich. He is much thinner and shrunken now. Goering looked a different man at the height of his power, he was sleek and obese then. It was his airmen that bombed Warsaw, Leningrad and London. Goering was the founder of the notorious Gestapo. He helped to draw up and carry out the plan of attack on the USSR. Goering is criminal number one. Rudolf Hess, leader of the Nazi party and Hitler's deputy. He summoned the Germans to prepare for war. Guns instead of butter, he cried. Joachim von Ribbentrop, Reich's Minister for Foreign Affairs. With the cunning of a fox, he was a past master in international intrigue. He was always ready to vow eternal friendship. But there was not a vow he did not violate, nor a nation he did not betray and betray again. He was the right and left hand of the warmongers. Wilhelm Keifel, commander of Germany's armed forces. I am just a soldier, he says, trying to disavow his guilt. But this is not the face of a soldier, it's the face of a hangman and butcher. His uniform is stained with the blood of disarmed and defenseless people. Ernst Kaltenbrunner, Chief of the Security Police and the SD. He is responsible for the gas chambers and gas wagons, the death factories and the concentration camps. On his conscience is the blood of thousands and thousands of innocent people tortured to death and buried alive in the Ukraine, Belarus, and the Baltic states. Alfred Rosenberg, the author of the race theory, which was...